Thank you, Black Hat Asia, for providing this opportunity. This is my fourth time participating in Black Hat, and I feel incredibly, incredibly honored. Today, I will be sharing a presentation titled Attacking Debug Models in the Android Ecosystem. My name is Le Weichu, and I will be the speaker for this session. First, let me introduce myself. I'm currently working at a self-driving company in China called Mogul Auto. I'm responsible for the implementation of the car-to-road cloud integrated solution in China. I oversee the management and technical work of the entire security team. Currently, I'm leading the team to protect the security of the car-to-road cloud integrated infrastructure and enhance the comp company's network and data security. Previously, I gained five years of work experience at Baidu, primarily focusing on mobile and IoT security. I have submitted a significant number of security vulnerabilities to Google Android, MediaTek, and Unisoc. 500 CVE vulnerabilities have been credited to me, and I'm also the top one bug hunter in the Unisoc product security acknowledgement. In 2000, in 2022, I was awarded the title of Top Bug Hunter by Google. I have, I have participated as a speaker in multiple industry security conferences, sharing my knowledge and insights. I will present the topic in four sections, background, threat model, case study, and summary. In the background section, I will begin by introducing the fragmenta fragmentation of the Android system. Next, I will discuss the native debugging architecture of Android. Furthermore, I will delve into the proprietary debugging architectures developed by two major vendors. I will provide an overview of their unique debugging frameworks, tools, and features. In the threat model section, I will focus in <clears throat> focus on conducting an attack surface, surface analysis of debugging models. In the case study section, I will provide practical examples of vulnerability discovery that align with the attack surface analysis conducted earlier. In this case, this case study will illustrate real-world incidents where vulnerabilities in debugging models were, were identified and exploited. By examining these cases, we can gain insight into the potential impact and the consequences of such vulnerabilities. In the summary section, I will provide an overview of the key points discussed throughout the presentation and offer recommendations based on insights gained. This section aims to summarize the importance of securing debug models in the Android ecosystem and providing, provide guidelines for developer security and organizations. The Android ecosystem is composed of several components as deficit in the diagram. Starting from the bottom, we have the system on chip layer, which includes major SOC chip manufacturers such as Qualcomm, MediaTek, Unisoc, providing the underlying hardware and board support package capabilities. The second layer is the well-known Android open source project, which not only provides capability at the SOC level, but also offers open source code for upstream customization and develop development. The third layer consists of various products, including smartphones, tablets, in vertical, and AIoT devices. <clears throat> the, four, the fourth layer, represents familiar OEM brands such as Samsung, Xiaomi, Huawei, and Google's self-developed Pixel devices. This layered structure contributes to the complexity of the supply chain and introduces fragmentation with the, within the Android ecosystem. Fragmentation is primarily manifested at three levels. Product frag fragmentation. Windows customize their own uh, launchers and operating systems, such as MIUI, Magic UI, and Harmony OS, along with customer development at the system level APPs, including debug models, note notepads, and device interconnectivity features. 
system fragmentation. Vendors perform customized development at the framework layer of USP to adapt to their hardware characteristics. They also implement low-level implementations at the hardware abstraction layer to bridge the framework and the driver layers. BSP fragmentation. <clears throat> Vendors customized their the hardware-related driver models, which are reflected in video processing, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GNSS, 4G, and 5G audio processing, display acceleration, and the security-related components. Based on the analysis above, it is the fragmentation of the Android ecosystem that leads to a merit of security issues affecting various aspects of the entire industry. To address the security issues introduced by fragmentation, Google has implemented the following four strategies. Introducing the Winder partition, Google introduced the Winder partition in the Android OVR, which is especially designed to host Winder specific uh, BSP code. This allows for better management and isolation of Winder specific components. Hardware abstraction layer. Google established the hardware abstraction layer as a bridge between the user level and the driver level components. Hardware abstraction layer provides a standardized interface and abstraction layer, enabling high, higher level applications to interact with underlying hardware operations without the direct dependence on the specific drivers. Security bulletin. Google published monthly Android security bulletin that include critical and high severity vulnerabilities reported by the window partners. This ensures timely disclosure and awareness of the security vulnerabilities presented, present in various vendor specific implementations. implementations. Android chipset security reward program. In 2019, Google initialed the Android chipset security reward program aimed at, at identifying and reward, rewarding security vulnerabilities, especially targeting SOCs. Unfortunately, as, um, as, as of May 2023, Google discontinued the ACSRP. These strategies reflect Google's efforts to in, enhance security in the Android ecosystem and mitigate the risk case associated with fragmentation. Android's native debugging architecture consists of various of components as deficit in the given sta standard Android architecture diagram. From top to bottom, system APPs, Java API framework, native C and C++ library, Android runtime, hardware abstraction layer, and Linux kernel. The standard uh, debugging architecture in the Android serves three main purposes. Mock capture. This includes capturing APP log, kernel log, and subsystem log, for example, modem, DSP, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. These logs are captured to an analyze and debug the behavior of, app of applications, system components, and specific subsystems. Function verification. This involves validating the functionality of, mo of models, such as the camera, display, hardware, and GPU rendering. It ensures that these components are working as expected. Factory testing. This refers to the testing and the validation of specific functionalities during the uh, manufacturing and the verif verif verification phase. It often involves vendor specific tests to verify the proper functioning of hardware and software components. When it comes to the Android debug architecture, the first thing that comes to mind is the developer options. The developer option provides the following basic functionalities, which can also be found in the Android standard development document. General option. This includes options such as memory management, error reporting, and the OEM unlocking. Debugging-related options. This includes USB debugging and the Android debug bridge debugging, which allows for debugging and communication between a computer and an Android device. Net network related options. This includes options related to Wi Fi and Bluetooth settings. 
input related option, this includes options for touch feedback and input settings. Session related options, this includes the option to display layout boundaries, which can be useful for debugging and optimizing the user interface. Here is the mm, translation of the uh, provided explanation about the debugging process using Android Debug Bridge. As shown in the uh, diagram from left to right, first uh, the user enables USB debugging. The action is performed in the settings app, especially in the settings provider, where the flag settings point global point adb enable is set to true. At the framework layer, there is a system server called Android Point Debug Point IADB Manager. This service continuously monitors the flag settings point global point ADB enable. When it detects that the flag is set to true, it starts the native diamond ADBD using the CTL point start method. At this point, the user can use debugging tools to connect to ADBD for debugging purpose. Here is the translation of the provided explanation about log capturing in Android. Both Android ART layer logs and native layer logs are involved through Java native interface and accessed via the Android system library called LiveLog. LiveLog maintains continuously communication with the native diamond logd through Unix domain sockets allowing the output of application level logs to be sent to logd. When using logcat to capture logs, it also communicates with logd through Unix domain sockets to read the relevant log outputs. Through the SC Linux rules of the logd, we can see that logd itself has permission to read kernel logs and the system files. Based on the analysis of the two aspects of Android debug architecture, we can draw the following conclusions. The debug, the debug model involves complex IPC communication, including vendor calls, Unix domain sockets, content providers, hardware, inter, how interface definition language, and more. The data flow within the debugging, debug models is intricate. User level data is progressively passed to higher privileged native diamonds and drivers. After introducing the debug architecture of Android, let's now shift our focus to the vendor debugging architecture. Firstly, let's consider the question why do vendors need, need to do the customized the, the debugging? I have summarized the following three points. Log capturing. It is necessary to often debug logs from subsystems and have standardized debug capabilities, which include capturing debug information from all models, such as MediaTags, AE, and Unisox YLog. Func function verification involves te testing multiple hardware related functionalities, such as telephony, connectivity, hardware, and location. Factory testing tools are used to perform basic checks on hardware components during the factory stage, such as the screen and others. Let's take a look at the log capturing <coughs> capabilities of vendor U. In the diagram from the left to right, at the user level, there is a system app called engineering mode exposed. This app can be accessed through two method, a security code and evocation from a third party app. Within this engineering mode app, multiple activities are introduced. For example, log management is used to control logs. Android log control is used to control Android logs. AT command control is used to test the effectiveness of AT commands. And modem log config is used to conf configure, conf configure modem related log, log switches. <coughs> These various activity or applications communicate through IPC to pass data flow to low-level models such as native diamond, 
and the hardware abstraction layer service. Most of these low-level modules are implemented in C++ and have system and root level permissions. The diagram on the, right, on the right showcases the control status of various log subsystems by the debugging app. The second case is about WinderM's debugging architecture. It also features a generic debugger UI as an entry point with various native diamonds at the background. Communication between them is established through Unix domain socket. Data flows gradually from the debugger UI to the native diamonds, undergoes processing, and is then transmitted to the driver layer. Let's move on to the third case, which involves vendor use feature testing and factory testing tools. The APP in question is a system APP called SPRD, Auto SLT, which is introduced by default in its BSP model. This model can be invoked by third-party APPs. With, within this system APP, various testing models are included, such as Wi-Fi test, RF Kelly test, RTC test, backlight test, camera test, system variant test, GPS test, Bluetooth test, the SIM card test, the OTG test, and more. Behind each of these testing functionalities is an APC mechanism that directly re reaches the low-level components. For example, the framework is invoked through banner call. Native diamonds are accessed via Unix domain socket, and the system files are read and are, are read, read using fail read operations. The diagram from the right demonstrates the presentation of the final information results. Let's take a look at a real life case. OnePlus phones are discovered to have a backdoor vulnerability that could allow direct routing of the device. The issue stemmed from the inclusion of a customized engineering mode APP by Cotton in the phone's components. Attackers could exploit the agency of engineering mode system APP to gain root access to the device. This highlights the following two issues. The first point is that the BSP often includes factory testing tools which can introduce high-risk security vulnerabilities. These tools, if not properly secured or removed before the device reaches the end user, can be exploited by attackers to gain unauthorized access or control over the device. The second point is that OEMs or ODMs often lack security awareness and fail to remove debugging tools from their firmware package, packages. This, this oversight can leave, leave devices vulnerable to exploration, as the debugging tools may provide unauthorized access or control over the device functionalities. This diagram illustrates the attack surfaces, a surface of the an analysis the debug models, which can be dived into four parts. From the perspective of system APP, they are vulnerable to attacks from the network and the local attacks from third-party APPs. In terms of network attacks, system APPs may often concern ports and uh, and, and accept abnormal parameters to perform high-privileged operations. In terms, in terms of local attacks, system APPs accept parameters through exported interfaces such as activity, service, broadcast, and provider. Since system APPs have, have high privilege, if they are compromised, attack, attackers can gain system-level access and carry out further privileged escalation attacks. Moving on to the framework layer, parameters from the user space are received through AIDL. If there are inefficient permission checks in the debugging components in this layer, it can lead to local privilege escalation. For native diamonds, they often receive data from the application layer through Unix domain socket. Improper handling of the data can make them vulnerable to attacks. Hardware abstraction layer service receive parameters through HIDL, and 
and the drive and the driver and the drivers receive parameters from our control. If these parameters are not properly processed, the models can also become targets targets of attack. Attacking debug de debug uh, attacking debug APPs. The attack path involves involved invoking high privileged components of the app through a through a third party app the targets of the uh, attacks are ex exported components of system apps which can lead to local privilege escalation for information le leakage Ad additionally system apps may listen on socket ports which can result in remote command execution the following diagram illustrates two types of vulnerabilities found in real life cases. I will provide detailed expl explanation of these vulnerabilities in the subsequent case study section. Attacking debug, debug diamonds. The attack entry point is the Unix domain socket. Possible security issues that can be triggered include, include memory corruption, information leaks, command inject, injection, and so on. Attacking debug hardware abstraction layer services. The attack entry points are the Unix domain socket or HIDL. Possible security issues that can be triggered include memory corruption, information leakage, and command injection. Attack, attacking debug drivers. The attack entry point is through the it's through fail operations. Possible issues that can be triggered include memory related problems such as memory corruption and information leaks. Through vulnerability research on debug models, we conducted in investigations on three popular vendors and discovered hundreds of security vulnerabilities, earning 49 CVE credits. Let's take a look at CVE 2098, an information disclosure vulnerability in the debug model of a certain vendor. The affected debug model is called AEE AED, which is a debug, debug, um, debugging native diamond. The model is supposed a Unix domain socket named com.mtk.ae.aed64. The model accepts parameters from UDS. Among the parameters, there is one for transmitting any process ID, which the AEE module first the command passed through the UDS. It extracts the PID and dumps the corresponding process memory information, resulting in information disclosure. The diagram on the right shows the complete proof POC, indicating that the transmitted PID can be arbitrary. This allows a malicious process to gain unauthorized access to the memory information of other processes. Ultimately, leading to information disclosure. Another issue related to information disclosure is the corresponding debug APP. The APP logs the various unique identifiers of the devices, such as MEI, MSI, calling address, and so on. Let's take a look, look at CVE 2022-48382. Uh, a memory corruption issue. The affected uh, process is a debug how service called vendor point SPID point hardware point lock at uh, 1.0 service. The entry point of this process is the HIDL common socket, which is a Unix domain socket. In the first image on the left, there is a buffer flow vulnerability. It can be authorized that the when the vulnerable S represents the stack space with a default size of 4096 bytes. The data passed into the function is received ex externally through UDS and can have a vulnerable length. This vulnerability occurs when the length of the input exceeds 4096 bytes, resulting in the buffer overflow. The image on the right shows a PUC, which passing data with a length of 10,000 bytes caused a crash in the affected debug how service. 
Let's take a look at another memory corruption issue at the driver layer. The problem is identified as CVE 2022-391118, and the affected debugging driver is SPRD Sysdump. The attack entry point is, is for fail operations. The issue here is an auto-bound write vulnerability. When writing an ex excessively long byte sequence, it triggers a panic in the kernel, and the PUC is shown in the image on the right. In this case is a local privilege escalation vulnerability, identified as a CVE 2022 47339. The affected process is a root privilege, the debug diamond called CMD service. The attack entry point is the Unix domain socket named CMD SKT. By default, the CMD service is not enabled. It only starts when the property flag CMD, CYS, CYS point CMD service enable is, is set to enable. CMD service accepts complex parameters through the Unix domain socket CMD SKT and eventually passes the parameter to popen for command execution. This ultimately leads to command injection, allowing for local, pri local privilege escalation and arbitrary command execution with root privileges. The last case, let's take a look at a complete vulnerability exploration process. This vulnerability is identified as CVE 2022-27250. It is a recurring issue, duplicated issue that was initially discovered by the security company, Software. The problem occurs in a factory testing tool called SPRT Auto SLT. This APP accepts various debugging components such as camera debugging, phone debugging, FM debugging, Bluetooth debugging, and more. The APP listens on point 7878 and accepts com commands. The command list includes the ab ability to execute shell commands. However, the supported commands may vary depending on the device. By connecting to point 7878 and sending arbitrary shell commands, we can remotely obtain system level privileges. The SC Linux context of the APP is SPRD Auto SLT APP. Let's further analyze the CVE 2022-47339. This vulnerability allows arbitrary command execution with root privilege, but it has some limitations. Firstly, enable the CMD service flag requires the system level permissions to set property. Ordinarily, sh ordinary shells or APP or third-party APP cannot invoke CMD service. Secondly, the CMD service listens on a Unix domain socket named CMD SKT, and the connections are subjected to SC Linux restrictions. Not every third party APP can connect to CMD SKT and send commands. We examined the SC Linux policy for CMD service and found that CMD SKT can be accessed by the SC Linux context of SPRD Auto SLT APP. Therefore, the attack path is, is clear, as shown in the, in the image on the right. The attacker initiates a remote attack to execute commands on S SPRD Auto SLT, gaining system level privileges and acquiring the SC Linux context of SPRD Auto SLT APP. Then, with system level privileges, the attacker executes the set property command to launch the CMD service process. Finally, due to the SC Linux security context of SPRD Auto SLT APP, the attackers can directly send commands to CMD SKT and execute arbitrary commands with root privileges. The end result is remote acquisition of root access of the device. It is worth nothing that, it, that this root access is, is within the SC Linux security context of CMD service, but the impact is significant. 
Finally, let's, let's summarize the key points of the discussion. Firstly, the developed model, models cover multiple layers of the system from the APP level to the driver level, resulting in multiple attack services, primarily focus, focused on inter-process communication. Secondly, some debug functionalities require ex executing high-privileged commands across processes. Imp improper handling of these commands can lead to local privilege escalation. Lastly, factory testing tools often invoke Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and telephony functionalities. Improper handling of these tools can result in information leakage, such as exposing Wi-Fi address, Bluetooth address, MEN numbers, and other sensitive, sensitive information. The security recommendations can be summarized in the following three aspects. For vendors, some debug modules should, should not release to downstream, such as factory testing. For OEM and ODMs, BSP modules should be selectively choosing based on specific needs and not accept in, in their entirety. For users, regular perform device security upgrades. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you for listening. Thank you.